Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Tiana here. I hope you guys have been well. If you're new to our channel, hello, welcome. Definitely click the subscribe button and join our YouTube family. Uh, most recently, uh, we have uh, launched a trying to conceive series on here on our channel as we have been trying to conceive baby number two um, since the start of this year. <laughs> If you are familiar with our channel or our Instagram, you will know that back in April we actually found out we were expecting baby number two. Uh, we were so excited to be pregnant, but unfortunately we did lose the baby. Um, so today I'm here to share with you um, the story behind that. The last videos you would have seen in the Trying to Conceive series, if you haven't watched them, they're all linked in a folder. Um, but number episode five would have been us finding out we were pregnant and then also finding out that we were going to have a miscarriage. After our miscarriage, um, things weren't over and unfortunately we did think they were and when we got our um, blood work back uh, post miscarriage, it indicated that the HCGs were rising, which is virtually impossible if you've had a miscarriage. Um, and we actually found out we were having an ectopic pregnancy um, and things changed there. So this will be my ectopic pregnancy story. Um, so um, let's just jump right into it. If you just excuse me looking down, I've just got some dates written down so that I don't forget. Um, this is also three months post our um, loss. So um, I'm in a much better place now than I was before. So hopefully it doesn't seem like um, <sighs> that I don't care. Um, but I just wanted to share with you guys some facts and stuff about um, our story. Um, so a little bit a backstory about my health. If you don't know, I have PCOS, uh, um, cannot have a baby naturally and used Clomid with our, to get pregnant with our first son Noah and also um, for this second pregnancy um, we had done one round on the 50 milligrams of Clomid and I didn't ovulate at all then we did one round of the 100 and that is when we found out we were pregnant I was so surprised that it was so quick um, but we actually found out on the 19th of April this year that we were pregnant and expecting baby number two. My husband and I were so stoked and my son was just over the moon. Uh, he was so excited. He's been asking for a baby for a very long time. Um, we actually shared the news with our whole family this weekend that we found out it was actually Easter weekend. We shared it with our whole family. Um, we're always pretty open with them and had no reason not to tell them. Or so we thought. <laughs> um, so yes, that is what happened. 19th of April, we found out we were ex expecting and we are so excited. On the 30th of April, we had our early dating scan with my fertility doctor and he, I just, I was excited. I couldn't wait to see the baby. We took Noah, we couldn't wait for him to see the baby. And unfortunately, when they did the ultrasound, there was no gestational sac and no baby. Um, the doctor didn't appear to be too worried. He really thought that maybe I had my dates wrong um, and he sent me for a HT, HCG test just to check where my levels were sitting at. Um, I straight away was really worried that there was nothing there. Um, we sort of had a scan at the same point with Noah and we could see something. So uh, I was pretty nervous straight away that this might not be a healthy pregnancy. Um, so we did the HCG test on the 30th of April and my levels were at 269, uh, which is definitely at the lower end of the normal range for what would have been five weeks pregnant. Um, but the doctor was happy. He said like, they look like, you know, they're within the type of normal range. Um, you must just be early. Let's schedule an ultrasound in two weeks. And 
in the meantime, if anything changes, you get any cramping, bleeding, just go to the emergency. Um, from the start, he did mention that there was a slight risk of ectopic pregnancy in any case where they can't see the gestational sac, um, but he wasn't really pushing that as a worry at that point. Um, so only like t a couple of days later on the 2nd of May, I actually ended up in the emergency room uh, with pain in my lower abdomen. Um, I was sort of having pain that night and at like early in the morning I woke up and I said to my husband, I need to go to emergency. Um, he took me in and they tr pretty much treated it like an ectopic pregnancy straight away. They came in, they did an ultrasound, bloods and urine sample. Um, and they also couldn't find the sack or the baby on the ultrasound and the technician was really worried about that. Uh, he said that we definitely should be seen at this point um, and they were expecting my HCG levels to almost be double because they should double every two to three days and it had been about two, it was over two days. Um, so they're expecting the number to sort of be around the five, six hundred. Um, and unfortunately they were only at 300 so they'd only gone up like 40 30 points um, so it was quite alarming but still they didn't really have much to tell me they did call my fertility doctor and say what do you want to do he said just send her home with some pain medication she may be having a miscarriage um, if there was no signs of the ultrasound on the ultrasound of anything ectopic there was nothing in my tubes um, they couldn't see any inflammation, so um, they sort of sent me home then uh, with some pain relief and said to repeat um, the HCG in a couple of days, which roughly worked out to be a week from when my first doctor did it at the ultrasound. Um, so he was expecting them to be quite a lot higher. So on the 7th of May, um, uh, the levels were only at 399 so that only gone up a hundred points in pretty much a week um, Our doctor our fertility doctor then confirmed that it was a non-viable pregnancy the HCG was not pr Producing nearly nearly enough. It should be in the thousands at that point and I wasn't even at 500 um, So he yeah, let us know that he thought that we would have a natural miscarriage um, and that's sort of where we left that conversation. Um, he just said to keep checking the HCGs to make sure they go down post miscarriage. Um, then <laughs> um, I actually ended up back in ER on the 12th of May, which was Mother's Day. I ended up throwing up and having a lot of pain in, again, my lower stomach. Uh, we had to wait at the hospital about five, six hours to be seen, actually. We were pretty much there all day on Mother's Day. I then started to have bleeding whilst in the waiting room of the emergency. Um, the whole appointment, not appointment, but once I got seen, they virtually said, you're probably just having a miscarriage. You just need to go home and take Panadol. That's all they said to me. They didn't run an ultrasound. Um, they did, I believe... They ran bloods on the 12th of May and my levels have went up to 688. So they actually went up almost 300 in a couple of days. So then I was sort of like, oh my God, I'm so confused. Um, my doctor still definitely confirmed it was a non-viable pregnancy and everyone thought I would just miscarry. Um, so a couple of days later, it was the 15th of May. So three days after that, um, actually had some like excruciating all this time in between though I had had bleeding and cramping but this day was by far the worst I was on my hands and knees in the showers extremely in pain I've you know um it was the worst pain I've actually ever had uh, I was in a lot of pain and TMI tune off if you don't want to know but I actually passed an extremely big clot uh, and it was totally different texture to everything else that had passed through I was extremely worried about this I was um, like sort of hyperventilating uh, my husband actually just gave me an endone and put me to bed because I was so worked up at this point he didn't even think it was worth taking me to the emergency uh, we did speak to my fertility doctor the very next morning and he confirmed that that was probably my whole uterus lining that had um, 
shed and that the baby probably went with it and that was definitely the miscarriage over um he said that was completely normal so i felt a lot more reassured and he sent me for a blood test and just said to get it every week or so to make sure they were going down and and to make sure they hit zero if they didn't hit zero i would have needed a dnc um so that miscarriage happened on the 15th of may uh, when I got my blood work back on the 21st of May, so pretty much a week later, my HCG had risen to 774. Um, my fertility doctor called me straight away and said that is impossible if you are had a miscarriage. Um, so basically my body recognized that there was no baby and the uterus shed like a miscarriage, but the, because the baby wasn't in there, it was still somewhere else producing HCG. This then, he pretty much thought that it was an ectopic pregnancy but he sent me for review with all my files to the pregnancy early bleeding clinic at Monash um, so I had an appointment with them two days after um, we got my blood work in it was an emergency appointment um, they definitely then confirmed I was having an ectopic pregnancy but unfortunately because my HCG was still low you actually can't see a baby on an ultrasound until your levels are over a thousand usually around the 1500 to 2 1500 to 2000 range and mine were only at this point 774 so um they actually didn't know the location of the baby <laughs> um obviously they ex expected the tubes because i had passed all my uterine lining so um and they did another ultrasound to confirm that all of that had passed and everything looked good so they main they definitely thought it was in the tubes but they couldn't confirm that um they then gave me three options really in this meeting uh one was just to wait and see if the levels would come down on their own or if they would actually go up to over a thousand and I could get the ultrasound in another week. Um, the second option was to have a methotrexate injection. This virtually kills the baby. Uh, it's a very strong drug. It's actually a chemotherapy drug and has to be administered at the hospital. It also means you can't try again for another baby for at least three months um, after the methotrexate shot. Um, and the third option was surgery obviously they definitely didn't want to do surgery because we who are struggling with fertility don't want to lose the tubes um so they didn't want to do that and they also didn't 100 percent know that the baby was in a tube and which tube so they really advised against surgery uh, as much as it killed me because at this point i just wanted everything done i wanted it out i was so over it um the emotional roller coaster that I had been on, I was just done. I, it was draining me so much. I was being a terrible mother. I was just, I was so over it, um, which sounds so <laughs> insensitive. But once you know that it's not going to be a baby, it feels so strange that there's something still stuck inside. Um, so as much as it killed me i chose to wait it was the safest option for us and future babies so i chose to wait uh, and go back in another couple of days four or five days so i went back in on the 27th uh, my ultras uh, my levels went up to 823 even though they weren't a thousand they did another ultrasound just to confirm and there was still no indication of any sign of a bulge or anything in the tubes they still had no non-location they advised because this had been like honestly it'd been over a month we found out we we're pregnant on the 19th of april and on the 27th of may is when they booked me for the methotrexate shot so because it had been so long and i was so done they advised getting the methotrexate shot and that would kill all the fetal cells and my hcg would go down and then we could try again in a couple of months it would avoid surgery and i wouldn't have to wait and also risk in waiting you also risk that um the baby keeps growing slowly and can burst your tubes so um so we booked in to have the methotrexate shot on the 27th of april um 
and they said that your levels should drop quite a bit and then they sort of slowly go down over the next three four weeks it actually took two months for my levels to get to zero uh, it literally they only hit zero like a month ago so it's been an extremely long draining journey um, the risk of ectopic after another one is also increased uh, so it makes me very very nervous um, to start again um, it has now hit the three month mark and we are able to start trying again um, is that is what we will be doing very soon um, but for now that's what I kind of wanted to update you on um, I just wanted to say I just feel for anyone who's been through anything so similar this miscarriage that I had was the most terrifying and traumatic event um, for me it was the waiting for it to happen was terrible once it happened it was terrible and then after all that to think that oh no actually you're still pregnant but we can't find it and it's non-viable uh, the whole situation was just scary it took a really really long time to resolve um, and it just completely played with sorry completely uh, mucked around with my emotions um, it was very hard our whole family's knew and I'm so thankful we told them uh, even though things went wrong I certainly needed them in that time I needed them to help me emotionally and I also needed help with Noah uh, so I'm so thankful that those that they knew and they were able to help and willing to help us during such a tough time um, I hope this video doesn't seem insensitive it has been a couple of months and I am no means over it it still hurts my heart so much um, for what we have lost and it terrifies me um, to think that people go through multiples of these and um, yeah if you are trying to conceive I send you all my love and baby dust and I really hope that uh, it happens for you soon I hope it happens for us soon and um, if you ever want to talk or ask questions or anything my door is on well, my door um, definitely message me it I'm available anytime to chat to you um, it's such a difficult thing uh, and it's also difficult to share not everyone agrees with me sharing so much of um, my life or our lives and stuff that we go through especially the negative stuff or the stuff that is more upsetting and not really spoken about but that is exactly why I'm sharing it is okay to talk about uh, infertility it is okay to talk about miscarriage and loss um, it if it can make one person feel less alone then that's fine by me it's it's hard for me to share I, you know um, knowing that everyone you know is gonna see this or that Everyone in the world has the opportunity to see these videos and your real emotions and um, no details like that. Uh, it is extremely hard to share. It's not easy to share. I'm certainly not sharing it for views or anything. Our channel is not even monetized. I share it because when I was going through this stuff, my doctor gave me nothing. I had no information. People had said to me, oh, I've had a miscarriage before and barely one person told me what to expect. And I was so shocked that it was so much harder than what I ever thought it was gonna be. Emotionally, mentally, physically, it was 10 times as hard as what I ever thought a miscarriage would be. And I'm so sorry if you have ever experienced one, two or multiples of these. Um, but I turn to other people looking at other people's experiences to get answers so if I can just help one person or be an answer for one person or just make someone feel like they're not alone in that time then it is so worth sharing so thank you guys for watching um I hope you watch the full series and um, understand where we are at and uh, where we want to be and hope to be um so thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in our next video bye